Okay, let's try this again. I have to refresh my screen again. See if I can get back in here. Julie, is this better? Okay, good. Let me get back to my video so I can see comments. I think I'm on the right one. Yes, okay. So I don't think you were able to see this then before. Here's the card that I made for the International Project Highlights. I am trying to catch the light right. This uses the Grapefruit Grove foil paper. And for those of you who um, look through some of my pictures, you have to catch this foil paper right in the light, otherwise it has that really cool rainbow effect. But this is the card I made for Kylie Bertucci's um, International Project Highlights. And if I get enough votes, I get to participate in an international blog hop with demonstrators from all around the world. And I posted that on my blog, I think it was Monday afternoon, and there's a link in there to go vote for me. So if you think this card is pretty and that I should win, you should go vote for me. I would really appreciate it. Hi, Sue. Um, okay, so my last live video was not doing very good, so I will repeat what I said. Um, I am not super organized tonight, so hopefully... Um, that all resonates with some of you getting really, really busy and hectic. And I have two projects that are super simple, super uh, quick to put together for when our lives get really busy and hectic and we need a quick card. Um, so I promise you at least one simple stamping project every week that I'm here. And tonight I have two of them for you. I always like to start my lives with a joke. <coughs> I still have this cough if you can um, hear. So I know I keep saying I should go to the doctor. I'm trying some immune, immune boosting stuff. We'll see if that helps. If not, I think I am going to have to go in in the next week or so. Anyway, um, so if I cough and hack, bear with me. Sorry. Uh, anyway, um, now I totally lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, joke. I decided tonight, usually I look up dad jokes before I come on here to tell you the corniest joke possible. And on my ride home from work, I was thinking, you know, I have a favorite joke from when I was younger that I think would be cute. And maybe all of you know the punchline, but maybe none of you do. So here goes. What time is it when an elephant sits on your fence? Time to get a new fence. Ah, super funny. Okay, so I am going to get started stamping right away. This should be quick because our projects are super easy, but I think they are beautiful. I'm going to flip the camera around and then we will do prizes. So bear with me here. Okay, like always, if the lighting, get this centered, if the lighting becomes an issue, please let me know. Prizes, so if you remember last time, hang on, let me get the cards I made. I did make these super cute adorable they're stuck in the foam adhesive there shaker cards however I am using these some of you who know a little bit about my family might know when I'm going to use these but I'm not going to spoil it officially on here so these are not prizes sorry instead 
I am giving away the simple stamping cards. Remember these beauties? There were four of them. And remember, these prizes are for orders, shares, and comments. So please share my video. I'm really working to expand my customer base and I so appreciate it if you share my video with your friends. That gets you an entry for a prize. When you comment and interact with me, I love it because then I'm not just talking to myself. So you get an entry for a prize for that. And of course your orders. I so appreciate your orders. I absolutely love that you support my small business and so um, you get a prize drawing for that. Also, when you order from me, I send you a thank you card. So, first winner is Sue Bonnet. So, Sue, you are winning the four pack of simple stamping cards, these flower cards. Our next prize, congratulations, by the way, Sue. Our Next prize here is this, remember we made this four by four frog card. I left the inside blank so you can write a personalized note. And then I showed you with the envelope punch board how to make a coordinating envelope that just slides in there. And then you could use a sticker or um, some tape or glue to glue that down. And we made two of those. Since I'm not giving away the shaker cards, I will give away both of the frog cards. Um, the first winner, Charlene Grunewald. Thank you so much, Charlene, for your support. Congratulations. And the second winner is Sherry Breland. I hope I'm saying that right, Breland. I don't know if it's Breland or Bryland. So congratulations, ladies. Sherry, I do not have your address, so if you could send me an email or a private message with your address information, I will get this out in the mail to you, um, I'm thinking early next week. So let me set those aside. I like to warm up with simple stamping, as you know. So we're going to start with that. <clears throat> okay. We're going to use my favorite stamp set right now from the big catalog. I know I was so, so busy when the big catalog came out that I did not spend very much time in my craft room, <coughs> excuse me, and um, so I didn't get to play with this as much when it, the big catalog came out, and of course I'm finding that I absolutely love it and finding time to play with it. So remember, this abstract impressions comes in a bundle. It comes with that beautiful butterfly die, and then a die with some really detailed flowers that can kind of go diagonal across your card. So, the idea of going diagonal across your card is what inspired me for my card tonight. We're going to use two colors that I love together. I was inspired by the card um, in the Simple Stamping last week, Highland Heather and Blackberry Bliss. Um, and so let me get these open and ready to go. These are, of course, some um, two-step stamps. So what we have here, it looks like a rose, and we've got kind of wider, wispy swirls, some thinner swirls, and then some more detailed swirls. And what I'm going to do is kind of stamp, I'm gonna stamp along here in, in a pattern. I'm kind of keeping a swooping motion in mind as I stamp. Okay. 
Again, this is Highland Heather. So we're just doing some repeated stamping here. So you see how we kind of have this swooping motion. Clean this off with my chamois. Who else absolutely loves these chamois? They are amazing. And for those of you who are environmentally conscious, they are um, eco-friendly too. Now I'm gonna come in with a little more detail on the thinner ones, again, in my Highland Heather. And I'm just going to stamp over what I already stamped. Now it seems strange that I would stamp in the same color, but do you see how it gives it two different tones? It's subtle, but it's there, so clean that off. And you know, of course I have to use my favorite color of all, Blackberry Bliss, and I'm using that on the more detailed swirls here. And I'm just going to go over the top of our roses. I have to tell you, I didn't even practice this. <laughs> and I am in love with how this is turning out. So I'm as surprised as how this, at how this looks as you are right now. This is my first time using these uh, colors together. Okay, now we want a sentiment. Again, we're doing simple stamping, so I've chosen the one that says, there's so much to love about you, and of course I'm gonna pick it out of this stamp set because I love the font. So I've turned my card so our flowers are coming down this way. And I am going to just stamp the sentiment right here in the white space. Easy, beautiful. Okay, and now We'll just do some really simple layering. Get my liquid glue. I'm layering this on some basic black. By the way, the dimensions for these layers on my Whisper White, it is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. So three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. The piece of basic black is just one eighth of an inch larger. So three and three quarters by five. Okay, I'm seeing a comment that Sarah lost me. Is anyone else having issues with the feed? Let me know. I can see that my viewers are dropping off. So I'm guessing there are technical difficulties, but some of them are coming back now. So I don't know. Facebook must be having problems tonight. Okay, now 
If you do not have any baker's twine or ribbon, you could certainly mount this exactly as it is right to your card, and that's beautiful. My card base is Smoky Slate. I, if you notice, I like to do a little bit of ribbon or baker's twine or something around like that on my cards. So, of course, since that's my style, that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm taking my Whisper White Baker's Twine. And I'm just, again, being simple with this, I'm just going to tie it in a bow. <clears throat> Remember, when I'm working with the thinner um, accents, like, let me get this out of the way. Those colors are a little distracting like um, linen thread or baker's twine. I like to tie my piece in a knot first. It helps kind of keep my um, twine, if you will, secure. And then I turn it into a bow. Now, because you've tied it in a knot first, sometimes it gets a little top heavy and then um, it doesn't want to always stay in the perfect place where you want it. So that's where I like to come in with some glue dots and secure that bow down right at the knot. Just like so. This is a really simple card just stamping some paper and a little embellishment. Trim the ends of the bow. And you always add some interest to your cards if you can pop a layer or two up on dimensionals. I'm going to do that. Now, I like to sometimes just use neutral card base colors for these. You also could use a coordinating Blackberry Bliss or Highland Heather. But I found that when you use card bases like Smoky Slate or Crumb Cake, um, something along those lines, that these colors really, really pop against it. So that's what color I chose. There you have it. What do you think? That was pretty easy. That card. Something you can definitely make at home. Just some repeated stamping. A couple um, steps in those photopolymer stamps. Your ribbon and you're good to go. Now, I made another card here using... Daffodil Delight, Grapefruit Grove, and Poppy Parade, I think it's called. Yeah, Poppy Parade. And um, here's where I, ooh, I bumped my phone here, hang on. Um, I put this one with these warmer colors on a crumb cake base, and I think that that pop of color against the neutral really looks great. So there we go, we're already done with our first project. Super easy. Okay. Let me get my mess cleaned up here and let's head on to our second project. Okay, now this one would be a little time consuming for you to watch me make the entire thing. So I have already done some steps of it ahead of time so that through the magic of TV, we can, um, you know how like on those infomercials, they put 
a casserole in the oven and before you they take one out and it's done well that's a little bit what's going to happen here so we're using the lovely lattice celebration set this is free with a $50 purchase um for those of you who like to color this is an absolutely beautiful beautiful set Hey, I'm reading the comments, and Leslie says, I don't want to miss that. With our last card here, if we double mount the sentiment, it would give it some extra flair. Yes, and I even thought about putting this on a stitched framelit, like a stitch square or stitch circle or even the new stitch rectangles, and that would be absolutely beautiful. There is a new celebration item coming out that I have on pre-order where I will show you a little um, technique with that that is similar that I think you'll love. Okay, on to our next project. So, Lovely Lattice. This is free with a $50 purchase. We're going to do some watercoloring. Um, but I have to tell you, the watercoloring we're doing is so, so simple. We're going to use our watercolor pencils and of course when we watercolor, depending how much water we're using, we can do a little bit of color on um, our Whisper white paper. It has a little tiny bit of gloss to it that you can do a little watercoloring on it or you can use watercolor paper. I love the watercolor paper, but even more, I love our shimmery white paper. I love the texture of it better than the watercolor. And it you probably can't see it in the video, but it has this gorgeous kind of glittery look to it. When you watercolor, we are going to want to use our Stazon ink. Remember, this is permanent ink. So be careful. Don't give it to your two-year-old nieces to use. Okay. I know I haven't stamped the whole thing. You will see why shortly here. Okay. Let me set this aside. Okay. So here is a little watercoloring trick for you. I'm using Calypso Coral and Old Olive. When you color in your um, image, you do not need to color the entire open area with these watercolor pencils. Can you see how I only use my pencil on the one side of that leaf? Well, now I can come in with my Aqua Painter I can pick up that color and I can just drag it across the leaf and I create a really gradient watercolor look with the darker at one end and the lighter tone at the other. That's all we're going to do here. So I'm going to take my Calypso Coral and I'm just going to do a little outlining here. Again, I don't need to color in the whole petal because I'll create some gradient color, kind of like what we're doing with our stamping blends, only I'm doing it here with watercolor pencil. Now, we all know that this part of the flower is usually really dark, so I'll make some dark lines there. All right, it looks pretty rough, but now here's where the magic happens. I'm getting this wet. I like to use the back of my hand to gauge how wet my aqua painter is. And I'm just gonna grab that color and Bring it across the areas of the card. 
Now, our aqua painters have both a bigger tip and a more fine tip. And I just realized I was using the broad tip, which is going to make it a little difficult to get into some of these nooks and crannies. So we're just moving that color from where we put it with our pencil towards the opposite end. If you want, you could have you could color or you could outline the inside lines of the flowers and move that gradient color out or do it this way. Julie, I agree. I really hope they come out with more colors. I actually would love it if every color that Stampin' Up! had had a matching dark and light blend. They already all have matching Stampin' Right markers, but if they also had a matching dark and light blend and a matching watercolor pencil, I think that would be pretty cool. Okay, and I'm gonna do this on one more flower here. So for this one, I'll show you how we can just do it on the inside. And then move that gradient color towards the outside. I think maybe I like inside to out better. Depends on your tastes. Okay. Now, on this one, we've got a center that I feel like should be yellow. So here's a little trick with our tip with our watercolor pencils. I only need a little bit of color in there. So I am just going to take my aqua painter right on the watercolor pencil to pick up that color. And bring it onto the card or the paper. Okay, not bad for some rough coloring, right? It's pretty darn easy. Now, I am going to uh, grab my heat gun and just get this dry quick. And then I'm going to do some fussy cutting. So I'm going to cut out this large flower here, whoops, and I'm not cutting out any of the leaves, only the flower. I should have done this ahead of time for you as well, but like I said, I'm a little bit unorganized tonight. I have had the longest week at work, and I'm super excited because tomorrow we are having family dinner at our house, and um, we're hosting, of course, so 
John's uh, family is coming over on his mom's side. We're having dinner together. And um, I'm making lasagna while I have meetings at work that run all the way until 5 o'clock at night. And I live 45 minutes from my office. So I put the lasagnas together tonight. So that my husband, when he gets home, can just pop them in the oven and they'll be ready when I get home and when everybody gets here at six. So I think lasagna is like, feels like the perfect family meal because it's so hearty. And then of course it's easy because everyone can bring, you know, their salad and their garlic bread and... Now, hopefully I haven't made you all drool all over your phones or your computer screens or however you're watching me. I hope your meal to I know, Sarah, I heard we're supposed to get, I think I read like five to eight inches of snow. I'm like... Wondering when this is just going to stop, all this snow. I loved the weather we had this weekend. Frustrating. Okay, so I fussy cut these really pretty flowers. And, ta-da! I have a whole one of these already. Um, the whole image already colored because... I know there is no way that you guys wanted to watch me color that whole thing, but I noticed I did forget the yellow on a couple of these flowers, so I'm just bringing that in there. See how quick and easy that is? <coughs> so we're going to do something easy, but really, really pretty. I'm going to mount this colored piece onto a piece of basic black. Now, this, these layers here on this card are exactly the same as the last one we made. So my piece of shimmery white here is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And the piece of basic black I did not get glue all the way to the edge here, shame on me. The piece of basic black is one eighth of an inch larger. And we do that so we get just that little bit kind of peeking out from under our card. I am going to mount this to a Calypso Coral card base. Now, our card base is um, I just realized that some people may not know this. This card base is just an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper cut in half the short way. So eight and a half by 11, half of the 11 is five and a half inches right here. And then when I fold it, the finished piece ends up being five and a half by four and a quarter. But of course, because I just cut the paper in half, it's the total is eight and a half by five and a half. I explained that to someone the other day and they didn't realize that it was just that simple. So I thought, hey, that's a great tip for my friends who are watching my Facebook Live. Okay, I am not popping this layer up on dimensionals and you will see why shortly. I am just going to glue this onto my card base. Now I think that we've got a really great pop of color with the subtle Calypso Coral from our watercoloring against the basic black on that Calypso Coral card base. Now, I would like to make this into a sympathy card. But I need my sympathy stamp set. So give me one second here. My 
I cannot find it. What's going on? Here it is. I'm using flourishing phrases. This one says with sympathy. stamp this. My strip of Calypso coral here is um, three quarters of an inch wide and it's just a scrap so it does not matter how long it is. Let me clean this off so I don't drop my finished project on it. I did that the other day. I was so mad. My card was done and it was ruined. So I'm a little paranoid about that. We're going to mount this right onto our card. So I am going to snip off that end at an angle and then I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. Ugh, I'm reading Sarah's comment about the snow. I just had so many days of working from home that I got so far behind with meetings in the office and then of course my calendar gets totally booked so I'm not looking forward to the snow that I don't feel safe going to work and have to work from home again the uh, time away from the office really adds up okay now I fussy cut these really pretty flowers we're gonna add some dimension to our card by popping them up on dimensionals right over the top here of our layer. Yes, lasagna does freeze well if we can't have it tomorrow. That is an excellent idea. Okay, so our two pieces that I cut out, I'm popping up on dimensionals so we get some layers on the card front. This card, because of the coloring, takes a little bit of time to get the coloring done, but it's actually very simple. It looks like it took a really long time. Now, of course, you know, I love adding my sequins here, so I don't know. I think these petal pink ones will be pretty. Get my... I love my take your pick pool, uh, tool for this because it kind of bends this flat end and I can pick it up really good. So let's do one down here. Of course, you know I like to work in threes or sorry, odd numbers. So we'll get two down there. And I feel like maybe we need one. Up over where? Where do you think? Here? Yeah, here looks good. So, there we have our finishing touch of our sequins. And this card is done. What do you think? Beautiful, huh? I love that. I really love the subtle color. Now, my test subject, as I was working on the card, I actually used the Melon Mambo, um, the Melon Mambo watercolor pencil, and that's how that one looks. So we've got Calypso Coral, Melon Mambo. Here's another case where I took some bright colors um, that black really pops because we use that black ink and put it on a um, neutral card base. So here you get kind of some softer color and then a pop of bright color. There we go. 
Okay, let me, again, get my stuff cleaned up and out of the way here. Whoops, so that we can move on to the next project, which is also some more simple stamping, like super simple stamping. You are going to wonder why I even put it on a video, but I just want to make sure everybody knows stamping does not have to be difficult at all. It doesn't have to be multiple layers and all sorts of die cuts and punches. And of course it's beautiful when it is, but it can just be simple. So I'm using my waterfront stamp set. I haven't shown this stamp set some love in a while. And so I thought I would take that out and do that. Again, we've got our note card cards and envelopes. These are the very vanilla note cards and envelopes. These come pre-cut, pre-scored. Everything's done for you. Super easy. Fold that over. Get a nice crisp edge. Since this is photopolymer, I'm going to bring in my Super busy, need to recover this with paper, stamp and pierce mat. All right, let's do a little creating on the fly here. I need one of my smaller blocks. So let's see what we can come up with. I love these trees. <coughs> And I'm thinking, what color you think? I'm a big fan of mint macaron. Okay. Oh yes, this is gonna be amazing. Okay. Our trees. And let's try this. Sentiment in here says friend. Now I'm going to stamp over these trees. So, ooh, I have an idea. How about I make these trees a little shimmery? I've got my Champagne Mist ink. And a blender pen. I do not know where I first saw that we could use a blender pen with this, but I'm just going to stick that into the lid of my champagne mist paint and I am just gonna take that shimmery color all over these trees it's probably really hard for you guys to see as soon as I'm done here I am gonna lift this up and see if you guys can see the shimmer on these trees. Can you see that? Let me see if I can get the light in here. It's so shimmery and glittery, sparkly. It's just a little extra detail. And honestly, nothing you have to do, but just something I thought would give your card a little oomph. Okay. 
course I want this to be good and dry. So let me just make sure that this is dry here before we go on to the next step. All right. Okay, so now we've got these glittery trees here. And I've got our sentiment friend. It just says friend, really simple. And I'm thinking, hmm, do I want to go over the trees to the right of the trees? Ooh, I'm feeling like right here. There we go. And you could have your card be done right now, just the way it is. We could add a little mint macaron nature's twine here from the big catalog. This comes with crumb cake, blackberry bliss, and grapefruit grove in it. And we could do a little bow here on the spine of our card. just to add a little extra. There we go. Of course, you know we gotta make our bow the right size. 